You're welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. President Muhammadu Buhari wants the United States to consider relocating U.S. Africa Command, also known as AFRICOM, from Germany to Africa. He made the plea during a virtual meeting with the U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, on Tuesday. The president cited security challenges in West and Central Africa, the Gulf of Guinea, Lake Chad region, and the Sahel as reasons the U.S. should consider the relocation. A security expert with years of experience in American law enforcement, Mr. Sonny Dikpolu, is joining us from Ibadan. Good morning. Thanks uh, for joining us on the breakfast. Good morning. Good morning. You're welcome. All right. All right. Yeah, let's um, you know have a um, you know get into this. For the last couple of days and weeks and months and years, we've spoken about our insecurity challenges. We've spoken um, about what needs to be done, and of course, uh, there are times when they've also mentioned mercenaries and, and uh, bringing in more uh, support from outside Nigeria. Um, when the president mentions Africom, do you buy into the idea? Uh, that America setting up its base here in Africa or in Nigeria might be the solution? Well, it sure will help. We need anything now that we can use to help. You remember, Africa used to be in Africa before. It was the previous, the last president that kicked them out of uh, Africa. And uh, when you have a new government, there's always chances for improvement. Everybody want to be better of in life. So I really support the president pleading for every help in every way he could get help. Because the security solution in Africa, even in Nigeria, is getting to the tipping point. Yeah, it's, not, it's not because, you know, I mean, it's, yes, we need help. But is AFRICOM the solution, seeing the role that we've, as a, we as a country have also failed to play? Will setting up you know, the U.S. Africa Command here change anything if we as a country cannot play our role perfectly? Yes, it's going to change a lot. Because when you have a bit somewhere, then you have, it's like a tree. You have branches everywhere. So they'll be able to be a boot on the ground when there's need to be a boot on the ground in any way, every way. So there's always possibility that when you put something new, when you put a boot or African somewhere in Africa, then it, there'll be a rapid de uh, deployment. If there need be for troops to be deployed anywhere in Africa, including Nigeria. So Mr. Dick Paolo, I'm really interested into, you know, finding out what the U.S. response to this might be. Because, you know, like you rightly mentioned, in about 2008, the United States set up Africa and said that they wanted to host this in other African countries. They approached Nigeria, but recall that then-President Umar Musayi Adua, you know, basically rejected them and said he would not have AFRICOM, you know, be hosted in Nigeria. Other countries also turned them down, South Africa, Libya, other African countries. You know, I think uh, there was just one African country that, you know, allowed um, AFRICOM to be, to be based there, you know, but looking looking forward now nigeria is in a worse place than we are than we were in 2008 you know insecurity is on the rise and the president is now asking you know for the us to uh, basically relocate africa from germany to nigeria looking at the you know the past do you think the united states is likely to grant this request in the first place yes i think so and i support it why do you because think so? Looking at, looking at 2008, look back. Look at the situation with the security in everywhere in Africa. Back in 2008, then if the, the president opposed it, this is, 2008 is quite a long time ago. Right now we have problems everywhere. And the problem is going to split to even Nigeria if we don't do something about it as soon as possible. The yeah. African will be a great help. It will be a big help. And with the new uh, administration in the United States, I'm sure and hope that the, they will relocate the African back to uh, Africa.
Yeah, but why? Because the United States is not just going to you know, transfer all those resources, human and financial resources, to Nigeria, to Africa, just because um, they like our smiles or because you know, they like our food. So you, I'm sure you are aware that countries work with interests. Nobody or no countries you know, you know, just act out of you know, friendship. There has to be some level of interest. And so why do you think that the United States will be interested in this idea? Look, United States have interest in everywhere, every corner of the world. And they are there to protect their interests. This is not just monetary interest. There's a lot of interest. Aid is part of it. If I can stop giving you aid, if I can help you another way, instead of giving you aid, giving you all this money, and then they don't believe in corruption. You know, all this money they've given to every country to support their security, some of them, they can't account for it. So if the United States can decide to put boots on the ground, that would be a, a great plus. There's going to be a negotiation in everything. Hmm. They're going to sit down on the table and negotiate. So let them agree first, then they will work out the details. So and see where they're going to go from there. Hmm. I, I, I can understand where my co-anchor is coming from because really um, international experts have said the chances of the United States relocating its, you know, African headquarters to Nigeria is very slim. And they consider, you know, even if you say that um, in 2008, our security challenges, you know, was different for what it is now. And that... And that's more reason why they should come here. But other people are saying, actually, that's the reason why they should not. And it just reminds me of the, uh, of the Saturday uh, travel advisory that the United States issued to its citizens not to come to Nigeria. They basically warned their citizens to stay clear of Nigeria because of the rising insecurity challenges. And we're talking about relocating over 3,000 you know, personnel, logistics, and all of that considerations. And you know, the, the, the body language was seen from, from you know, international experts, like I've said, from what I've read you know their thoughts on this is that it's really very slim that even though the president the present administration of the United States seem to be you know more favorable to Nigeria compared to the administration of Donald Trump but it still is very slim do, do you you know see any logic to that of course you see the the, the president know what they're doing the administration because they, they they consult a lot of people it's not just one day waking up and decide this is what I'm going to do. They already consult. They consult with the Europe. They consult with some of the African president before the president Buhari can take it upon himself to uh, to stand up for all Africa. It's something that they already work out. So I'm pretty sure that uh, he's going to do all his best to bring the African back to Africa because. It's going to be a benefit for all, not just Nigeria. It's going to be a benefit for every African country. Uh, help us clarify what exactly AFRICOM is. Excuse me? Help us you know, understand better what exactly AFRICOM is. Is it, is it, well, is it, is it a military it, operation? It's like, a, it, it's, yes, it's a military oper operation and it's... The, it's like the United States is putting uh, the military, their military somewhere closer to where they see fit that there's, they, they, there's bound to be trouble so that it could be a quick response. Then they'll be able to deploy, they'll be able to uh, look through the sky and see all those deserts, what the problem that is going on around the globe. So they could advise the country uh, and then work out details with the country involved and see how they could help. You can't call the United States from 1,000 miles away when there's trouble in Africa somewhere, maybe in Guinea or even Nigeria, that you need help. And we've seen the result of private contractors. So if you decide you're going to use private contractors, they could be big problems. So I can see why they try to put more pressure on United States to bring up come back to Africa. Oh, for, because it's, a, it, it's, it's something that there will be a quick response when there is a problem in Africa, somewhere in Africa. 
Yeah, except, you know, um, well, we probably need to be sure exactly what the discussions will be like if, you know, this has been taken seriously. Uh, but, you know, setting up AFRICOM here doesn't necessarily mean commitment um, or, um, you know, 100% commitment to tackling Nigeria's security challenges. It's simply setting up a base here. Um, but I want you to respond to two things. Uh, Senator, or former Senator Sheikh Hussani describes this as a, an attempt at recolonization. Um, that's one. And then the second one would be the fact that President Mohamed Abouari, initially, when we, the talk of mercenaries came up, uh, uh, shut that down and said that we're not going to be reaching out to or seeking mercenaries or help from um, uh, foreign um, uh, mercenaries, basically. So why <coughs> is there a, a change of heart now? And do you also, uh, what's your response to Sheikh Sani's uh, uh, thoughts? Look, uh, to the senator, with all due respect, you know, we all have freedom of speech. And as a senator, he's in a better position to speak up. But this is a modern war. Okay, what he's talking about is way, way, way back in the days, it's past. Everybody needs help in life. Are we just going to look Africa to keep generating and keep uh, all this uh, problem keep growing every day? What's going to happen in five years from now? Look back 2008 to now. So imagine what is going to happen in another few years ahead. Nobody knows. So the better, the earlier you tackle your problem right now, is the better for your people. The president is a great leader. He took security as his number one priority challenge. So let, it, let us help him. All the senators should be able to help him, you know, to achieve his goals. So to be a better Nigerian. Once there's no security problem in the country, the, the country economy will grow. Everybody want to come back to Nigeria to go back to their country to do better. So I will advise the senator to, uh, to support the president's idea. Hmm. So I look back at the news and I saw that, you know, just last year in 2020, Africa began pulling out some of its troops in Somalia. And we know the state of the country right now. You know, Nigeria, some would argue, is, is a lot you know, better in terms of security when you look, when you compare that with Somalia. You know, but that goes to show that this issue of the likelihood of the United States considering to, you know, bring its troops to Nigeria is still very dicey. But really, regarding Nigeria's security situation, what can we begin to do internally, away from seeking external help? Of course, we all need external help. We need professional, we need uh, expertise. When you talk to Somalia, it's about fun. They pull out fun that uh, located to Somalia security. And when you start pulling out fun, so people is going to start wondering, what, that, what am I doing here? Everybody needs support. So Nigeria can benefit a lot from this. If they all sit, all the, uh, the generals, the security experts, even the community, they have to reach out to the communities, to the state governors. So everybody is going to benefit from it because the, the security situation is, uh, like I said, is getting to a tipping point. Yeah, but, but well, well, let me go back to what you think that we have gotten wrong, you know, in tackling our challenges with regard to security. Where do you think that we have gotten it wrong uh, that we should be able to uh, fix by ourselves? We, you see, the, the president and all the security people, they need somebody they could, uh, they could rely on, they could trust. It's all about trust. Because when you have a group, when you have a squad in security, that, okay, this is what the challenge is, this is what you want to do. They have to map up the whole area and know what they have to do. So it's not because Nigeria is having problems. If federal government wants to tackle something, we have a state government that is going to be a barrier. So they want the fund to come to them. But when the fund goes to the state governor, then there are going to be a lot of uh, challenges and problems. What fund are you referring so to, sir? Well, when you fund security, uh, you know, in the security challenges, you have to fund like, OK, we're having problem in so, so, so Niger Delta. They need fund to tackle those problems. And then the federal government 
prior with the through the state, they already allocate a fund, then they're going to tap into that fund to tackle the security challenges. But if you can't really fund the security that you send out to go and do a job for you, then they're going to be a problem. Mr. Dipolo, Mr. Mr. Dipolo let, 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 me, let, me, let me rephrase. Kindly hold on. Um, this is what I'm asking. In the last couple of years, we have had our um, security challenges um, you know, grow beyond just Boko Haram. Now we're talking of ISWAP. We're talking of bandits. We're talking kidnappings and, um, and um, um, religious or, or tribal clashes across the country. It's never, and I'm, I'm guessing you, you might agree that it's never been as bad as it currently is in Nigeria. The question I'm asking you is, why do you think we have not been able to tackle it and it, it has gotten this bad? Where do you think the Nigerian government has failed? Well, we can put economy challenge. There's a problem with our economy in Nigeria. Because uh, take, for example, the kidnap. You see a lot of people who don't have no job, who don't have no job. So they've been recruited. It's like back in the days in Iraq, you know? So they recruit people, innocent people, because they don't have no job. They don't have nothing to do. <coughs> so the, the problem is that if the economy of a country is great, then the security problem is going to be limited. But the problem with economy in Nigeria is becoming alarming. So everybody now is looking for alternative. So you see innocent people being recruited to join kidnapping, to be with the bandit, to go into the, uh, uh, into the forest, start fighting, joining the Boko Haram. All right. Uh, aside aside the economy, aside the economy, in what well, other I, in what other ways do you think the Nigerian government has not done well enough to tackle our uh, security challenges? Well, apart from that, we have all these ethnic pro problems. You know, when uh, a lot of uh, people they spilled a lot of problems on the news. When you're talking about like Arewa. They're talking about the southwest and they're talking about the eye up then they start building you know building the drum on all those problems so it's like every one day one day everything is going to collide together is that the so problem the problem with that is you know you excuse me yes go ahead go ahead oh i mean i i i i'm hoping that we can get you know to Specifics. Um, you've mentioned the economy. You've blamed the economy as one of the reasons why you know Nigeria is dealing with so many of these security challenges. You, now you've also mentioned uh, people making statements on on TV. You've mentioned Arewa. Um, are, are these the major factors and the reasons why you know Nigeria security agencies have not been able to tackle Boko Haram and have not been able to tackle you know ISWAP and the bandits that have killed thousands of Nigerians in the last few years? Are these the, the well, reasons you would say this is happening? What I said earlier on is about fund, funding. We need funding, we need technology, we need experts on the table. There needs to be a regional division. You know, what part of the problem that is, uh, uh, is where they could put a lot of uh, uh, boots on the ground and people, experts, where they could use drones, where they could use all this uh, in, uh, good technology. There's a lot of company, there's a new company, a Nigerian company that's coming up recently, which I believe that uh, it was on, the, on your news a uh, few uh, months ago. So that can be a big help once they give them a license. And then it's going to be incorporated with the government. They could use help, they could get help from that company because it's a great innovative, in a great technology. So I believe that with all those equipment, with all those uh, uh, brain, then Nigeria will achieve something. Because right now it's getting, it's getting bad. And uh, you know, all the security challenges, they need to regroup. They just, you know, the, the, the government just, uh, uh, they just put out the, those uh, old genera. They bring in a new brain, a new genera. So let's see how the core cool, uh, they could uh, map up the old problems and see what they could tackle. Right. And they so all you, need help of everybody. 
So you've not the security expert. Great. So, so you've, let you've mentioned whatever they need on the job to help them out. Great. And th the reason I ask this question is because I needed us to understand, you know, the role that Africom is meant to play. You've mentioned the economy. You've mentioned Arewa and statements that have been made um, across the country, and then you've also mentioned uh, funding. So what role does AFRICOM play here? The AFRICOM is going to be like a leader. They, 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 you know, they're going to work with every country. So most countries is going to designate some uh, group, you know, like a, a squad, that they're going to be working directly with the AFRICOM. And then they're going to make use of the technology. Technology is very important. If, you, if there's a problem somewhere in the desert, and we're here in Nigeria, you need to be able to see the whole area. And you need to be able to see how you can deploy, you know, boots on that area. And then you need to put intelligence. You need to gather intelligence. So, and that is very, very important too. So, Africa is, 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 uh, is something that they're going to bring every country together when it comes to security challenges. It's not going to be like all people like, oh, I can do it alone. I don't need any help from anybody. No, this is a modern world. You need help. Do you think AFRICOM would, would agree with, you know, reintegration of ex-Boko Haram um, into the army and uh, forgiving ter repentance uh, terrorists? Uh, no, no. But at the same time, we need intelligence. We need sources, okay? African, they have sources everywhere. They have sources probably within the Boko Haram, people that is reporting back. It could be done with agents, but they have to work out, the intelligent people has to work out how they're gonna manage the sources, the, the, the resource they're getting from the uh, Boko Haram or from the, uh, all these uh, bandits. There's always intelligent person, uh, you know, spying on every, everywhere. So, but to just give amnesty to a, a whole group of a, a terrorists, I don't think they're going to buy into that. But the details is still going to be worked out by both sides. So we don't know what they're going to work out. So let's wait and see. Mr. Dikpelu, I, I asked us before, but I want us to talk about this more extensively now regarding security solutions. And I'm saying, what can we do internally as a country to solve this? Should we be looking at state policing? What measures should we look? I'm not saying let's not invite Africa, let's not invite you know, other foreign powers that can help. But what can we do from the inside to solve our security problems? Well, the federal government used to, uh, they, they need to call on the state governor and work out how they could work the state policy. They need it. We need it in Nigeria. I know that they're looking at the uh, other side of it, that there might be a governor that's going to misuse those uh, power. But there's always, you know, uh, a law that they have to work within. So we need policing in every state. Because with that, the governor will be able to deploy police to every area, maybe uh, uh, where they see there's a trouble. Let, let's take River State, for example. So the River State, they're having challenges. And then now, the challenging is spilling to everywhere. You, you see kidnapping everywhere. So if the state governor could have their own police, then they'll be able to protect the border, their own border. They'll be able to uh, deploy police to everywhere, even the waterways and uh, air. So they need funding too. You can't be policing without no funding. And then they're going to work with the community and see who are the bad eggs in the community, how they could pick them out. So because right now, the, uh, the criminals, they, they haven't found. Where they haven't that found, they need to investigate and shut it down. Hmm. The government oh. can't operate without funding. They have funds to buy ammunition. And now sometimes you see criminal ammunition supervised the police officers. Yeah. So all these things, they need to go back and it's a big challenge. But so, 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 so you back to funding. Yeah, so, so you, you don't think that over time, 
Nigeria should have been able to afford intelligence equipment in the last couple of years. We've spent billions of Naira buying super Tucano jets and, and the likes. Um, but you believe that only when AFRICOM comes, uh, then we will be able to gather intelligence better and tackle our challenges? Yes, I believe that because when you put a leader somewhere, a leader that is credible, that you can trust, you could believe in, then they will do the job for you. Okay? So when you have a leader here in Nigeria, you, you, uh, you have challenges, you have governors troubling the guy, you have uh, senators, you have the travel people, you have everything. It's going to be a problem. But that problem is going to stop as soon as the African comes. How? Their own the, job uh, is going to be tactical. What, what? They're going to do what they're going to do. There's no governor that's going to have problem with them. There's no any. Uh, so, so, so what you are saying is, what you are saying is that the governors and the senators uh, are troubling President Muhammadu Buhari, but when Africa, you know, sets up in on the continent, then the governors and the senators will not be able to trouble them, and we will be able to sort out our security challenges. You see, the problem in Nigeria, we all know it. It's about ethnic city. Uh, the Yoruba Arewa group, I mean, uh, Odua group, you have the northern part of Arewa, and you have the I'm up in the east. So you all have those problems that is knocking and knocking and knocking. Look, when the African comes, we are talking about broad. Every country is not just going to be Nigeria. So they have funding. They're not going to have challenges with funding because they already work out details with every country. So they're going to use that funding to do their job. And they already have the technology. They're going to, it's a plus. The technology is going to be a beneficiary to every country in Africa. If you're going to locate funding to buy technology, you know how much it's going to be. And then do you trust the people you are giving your money to to buy you a technology from somewhere? Okay. You don't know what they're going to bring to you. Mr. Dick Paolo. It seems, you know, the majority of our conversation has been what Nigeria has to gain, how relocating Africa to Nigeria will benefit us. But the United States, you know, they will think about this logically. And the question would be, what would the U.S. have to gain from coming to Nigeria, investing all their troops, relocating them, when their security cannot exactly, you know, be guaranteed? So what would the U.S. have to benefit from relocating to Nigeria? Look, when, before they even come to this, United States already consult. United States, they consult. They're going to consult people like Exxon. They're going to consult those big giant companies in Nigeria and in some African region that, OK, what is your problem? What area are you having problem when it comes to security? We all know they're having security challenges. They're going to put everybody on the table. United States judge is going to wake up one day and say, that, oh, come on, let's go set up in Africa. No, there are some group of companies, the good, uh, uh, big players, that is even knocking the drop. They already put it on the, the table that this is area we're having challenges. The ambassadors as in the uh, United States ambassador in every country, they know the challenges. You mentioned a few, uh, few minutes ago that there are some states that they put on a uh, U.S. Uh, website that the citizens shouldn't travel to travel alerts. They all know those are combined with the uh, group of intelligence at each embassy. So, so is it that Nigeria so would be the only beneficiary of that military partnership? It's going to be a beneficiary to all. So what would, the, what would the U.S. To stand Nigeria. to gain? That's what we're trying to establish. It's going to be. Because if you're telling me to come over here in a, uh, this is not a soft, a soft uh, a zone, this is a big problem. There's a big problem, big challenges, security challenges in everywhere. So if you not say, before United States can even put it on the table, that, okay, are we going to come or not? Then that's a progress. It's a plus. Then now let's everybody come to the table and then offer whatever they're going to offer to seal the deal and bring them to Africa. It's gonna be a big plus to Africa. 
believe me. Can Nigeria finance the relocation of Africa to Nigeria? A country that seems to well, be in Nigeria debt. Can, Nigeria can do it alone. Like I said, the president already consulted uh, some African uh, countries, the presidents. They already sit down, they already thought about it. They've been thinking about it for a while. It's not something they just wake up in one day and want to do. All right. So All right. they already agree on some area. Funding from each country, what each country is going to offer. So either uh, through gas or through uh, monetary funding, everything they're going to offer, they already work it out. It's not going to be on Nigeria alone. All right, Nigeria thank you, can thank you very much. And we can't shoulder the funding alone. So, Nidhi Polo, thank you very much uh, for uh, joining us on The Breakfast this morning. Um, and we wish you a beautiful day ahead. All right. Thank you. All right. Stay with us. Uh, we're talking poverty next. Uh, the National Poverty Reduction Strategy, which has been set up by, or well, approval has been given by the uh, Nigerian government. The vice president will be heading that uh, team. And uh, that's uh, coming up next on The Breakfast. Yes, and uh, we'll be discussing in detail the NNPC and uh, remittances to the FAAC with an energy expert. Do stay with us.